Hi, my name is uh, Anders Christensen and I'm the chief architect in Milestone Systems. I'll uh, introduce you today to how to develop a plugin for our access control module. Let me start with showing uh, what modules and uh, features we, um, th th this is built up from. We have an event server. Within the event server, we have an access control module piece. And the access control module is controlling a number of plugins. These plugins can be developed by you guys and are responsible for the communication from this system to uh, an access control system. So what happened is that um, the access control module are loading and handling all these uh, plugins, loading them up and conveying information from the access control system into the access control module and to the rest of the uh, VMS uh, world. We have a few other things that are uh, necessary to understand. We have an administrator. Within the administrator, we also have a piece of the access control module. And this access control module actually communicating with this access control module in order to convey information from the plugins to the administrator, so the administrator that are running uh, can uh, configure what is necessary. This is showing UI, so um, what we have is a number of uh, use controls that the user will see. What we have here are uh, basically uh, how to set and connect to an access control system. Usually that would be IP address, username, password. There's a way to uh, uh, for events to categorize events so that if you have hundreds or maybe even thousands of uh, different events, they can be mapped into uh, categories, and then the categories again can be uh, uh, triggering events and, uh, and actions. That's all done in the access control module part, and it's not something that you guys have to uh, uh, worry about. What we have is also smart client, and in the smart client we also have an access control module piece, and this again are talking to this access control module. And this is responsible for showing the operator user interface. So here we have a number of um, interfaces where we can show the um, event list that's available for all the events that has happened in the access control system. This can be filtered and searched. We have a way to show it on alarm list. If you want to manage events, uh, then they can be uh, turned into an alarm. We have a way to show it on, on a map, so if you want to get an overview of what doors are open or closed or what their state are, you can have icons on a map and you can control what the specific icons are for the individual uh, item. And then um, you also have a fly-in so that if you have some kind of uh, action or event heading on the system or somebody pushing a button or whatever it is, then a fly-out can come up and be in front in the smart client and you can take action to um, communicate with the person. If um, there's a camera with uh, speakers and microphones, you can do a two-way communication. Talk to the person and ask, you know, why do you want to get in of, of the door? What's the issue? And then you can push buttons or do some commands. It'll come back into the access control module, into the plugin, and the plugin can fire commands to the access control system. So in the, in the smart client, we have a number of user controls um, that are populated and maintained by uh, the Milestone Access Control module. And again, uh, you don't have to have any user interface in your plugin. So the key to, to this is that the plugin are talking to the system that again would uh, uh, talk to controllers and doors and readers or whatever. It's all conveyed into the, um, to the plugin world here and exposed to the Access Control module that'll um, send it out around the system where it is uh, required. There's no user interface uh, development to be done in the plugin. Okay, so for now, let me turn over and show you a little bit of what happened in uh, Visual Studio. So now we have uh, Visual Studio 2010 open on this uh, machine, and I'll show how to uh, start the plugin development for the access control module. We will utilize a template that is part of the MIP SDK and um, 
With the uh, MIB SDK, we have uh, three different uh, templates available. And in this case, we, show, we uh, select the access control one. So here we have um, three um, solutions uh, that come with the MIB SDK. We select the access control one, and we will uh, generate the plugin with all the classes that are the um, minimum you need to implement uh, for the plugin to work. So here we get a class overview of what we have. In the plugin folder, we have um, some system definition of the plugin. Basically, this is uh, some names and ID and icon of the plugin. And under managers, we have the classes uh, that are managing different areas in the plugin. I'll get back to that. Let me just show a little bit in, uh, in uh, these classes. Uh, basically, um, the when uh, generate the project from the template, you get uh, all the classes that are named to the name you selected on the front. Uh, you get new IDs uh, in the GUIDs. Uh, so the, this plugin will have different GUIDs than all other plugins. And um, uh, so it can uh, coexist with other plugins in the same installation. Let's just uh, shortly take a view of the um, uh, content of the system class. So we, when we look in the class for the system file, we have a few uh, fields. Um, and what we have is here, uh, we made a connection between all the managers and the system. Um, so when you, from a class perspective, uh, work with it, you can go through the uh, system class and get hold of all the other managers. This is relevant uh, uh, when we get into the other uh, classes. But basically, we here have pointers to, uh, to these. And then, uh, this is basically the construction. If we look at the uh, plugin class, then we can see in the fields here we have uh, the, the ID name, version, and so on that are relevant for the different plugin for this plugin. You don't really need to change that in the beginning. Um, you can modify the uh, name afterwards. So let's take a look at the uh, managers. We have different managers here that are managing different areas of the plugin. So let me just uh, quickly go through uh, what the purpose of these uh, managers are. Um, we have um, a connection manager. The key purpose of that is to create a connection and control it from the plugin running in the event server and to the access control system. So the connection manager has a few commands that are coming from the access control module to say create a connection and close down a connection. And the connection manager also issue state and events when the connection falls out or there are some errors on that. That's the key purpose of the connection manager. Then there's the configuration manager that holds the configuration of the access control system. So when the connection manager has connected to an access control system, the configuration manager can go out and fetch the configuration from the access control system convert it into a unified way that are used by the X control module and populate the configuration to um, the ACM module and thereby to the administrator and the smart client to be utilized. This also includes definition of, for example, events and uh, categories that may be relevant for, for this access control plugin. Then we have a, a credential holder manager and uh, this is uh, a manager that fetches uh, cardholder information, uh, name and picture basically from the access control system into the, uh, to, uh, uh, the access control manager that can be populated out to the smart client and have been shown together with uh, events uh, that are relevant for a cardholder. Then we have an event manager and the event manager uh, is the one that uh, uh, through the probably the connection manager uh, communicate with the access control system and receive event uh, real time and change it into uh, whatever is relevant for the plugin and populate to the access control module that will then process it into rules, uh, categories and whatever else is configured. But the event manager basically exposes the event to, to the access control monitor. Uh, the state manager uh, does a similar thing uh, the key thing here is to, is to understand what a state of an object is. Is the door closed or open? Uh, in order for us to understand that, uh, a state change needs to be populated when that happens. While the event is maybe the door is opening, 
there's also going to be a similar state at the same time to say now that the, the door is open. Um, and this is uh, relevant, uh, especially when the system starts up, to understand what is the initial state of the system uh, before you have any events coming. Very often the event manager and the state manager are implemented in a, in a common way uh, because you may only get uh, one kind of information from the uh, access control system and your plugin will convert it so you both have state and events that are being populated uh, uh, to the access control module. That's a key overview of uh, the managers uh, that you need to implement. When this is implemented, you don't need to do anything else. You don't need to do any uh, UI. It's all handled by the access control module. Thank you very much for listening in. I hope this was useful information. Thank you.